Welcome back everyone to Doctor Who Reviews. This week, we are crying a lot. Because somebody... Fuck you, Fred. Because somebody picked the... Just take my hat. Are we the fifth? Naming no names. Fresno. Fuck you, Fred. Naming no names, Fresno. But it's okay because um, it does mean that we are joined by more than unusual compliment of guests. So, firstly, to my virtual left, at first he was afraid and then he was petrified. It's Freezing Inferno. <laughs> Hi, everybody. To my virtual right, send her your power through the lightning in your eyes. It's Cat. It's okay. I've already got all the power that I need to take over the world. And our virtual special guest, if we're really nice to him, He'll tell us how the straight story is the best Star Trek movie of all time. It's Sean Dillon. If you're listening to this, that means Fresno has attempted to get me onto the Doctor Who Reviews podcast once again. <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, Tucker Carlson was recently fired from Fox News, and I am too busy celebrating to participate. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best description ever. <laughs> okay, uh, Rainiac, you're fired. Sean, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to be here again. Yeah, we and finally, we're we're finally get the talking person. My God! <laughs> Yay! Uh, Ray, that 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 intro. Uh, we'll, we'll have words with the intro later. I've only got two Lynch films left. I'm gonna find yep. it. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> yeah, and you're not gonna find out until that other project is done. We reach in the other project. <laughs> Let's talk about projects, you say? Anyway. Anyways. So, uh, this is why I picked uh, Angels Take Manhattan. Because, uh, John, why don't you tell the lovely folks at home about Who Watch? Uh, Who Watch is a project I'm doing with a fellow comics critic by the name of David Mann, wherein we wa watch the entirety of the new era of Doctor Who, as well as some classic era stories that I, I uh, uh, select for David to watch. Uh, some of these are good, like, like say, a, the Edge of Destruction, and some of them are ones that David does not care for, like Genesis of the Daleks. Hmm. And, and generally, we are going through the entirety of the series from start to finish. Uh, we just finished one on, on Pierre Capaldi's era of Doctor Who. Sorry, we just finished one on the start of Pierre Capaldi's era with... It's all the way up to Kill the Moon, which has absolutely no controversy whatsoever. First, yes, no, 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 it's totally no, not, not at all. An abortion allegory at all. Especially no, not uh, here in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, and we are going to be doing the back remaining episodes of Series 8 sometime this week with some very special guests. Oh, very nice. But in particular, well, it's I nice to, for you to invite me. I'm very special. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> Yeah, but this was started because I was reading, uh, I think it was Who Watch 13, which was on Series 7, where you uh, said some things about the Angels Take Manhattan and how its reception was uh, poor and misguided and blah, blah, blah. And then you ended it by saying, this is my favorite Matt Smith story. Yeah, this is my favorite Matt Smith story of the entire era, which, if I'm being completely honest, is saying that it's my favorite part of the first draft of the Pierre Capaldi era. Which, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And so some of the things you had to say about that made me go like, oh, wow, I would like to uh, hear these on a podcast with my other friends. And so here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, did here you hear we that, are. Rainiac? We're now the other friends. Yeah, I heard. Also, just throwing out all my notes. I see, to I see where we stand. Just throwing out all my notes to criticize this story. I'm down to about half a page. Great. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Look, I only have one criticism, and we all know exactly which one it is. Was it It Made You Cry? No. No. It, it was uh, a certain giant lady. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we, we will get to that very shortly. The only place that giant women should exist is in Steven Universe, so... Yeah. Ah! I was just about to make that little gag, but thank you, Kat. That's good. It beat the gag I was about to make, so let's move on. Uh, yes. So we, we don't start with the Doctor, or Amy, or even Rory. We start with a private detective. We start with Columbo. Essentially. No, nah, 
and not really Columbo. Columbo is more of a bastard than this guy. <laughs> more of a bastard. <laughs> oh, Mike is going to want to know your location. <laughs> Good luck finding it. Yeah, we already established that, that no one knows. <laughs> For those who are curious, Sean lives at the U.S. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yep. Oh no, I have accidentally doxxed him. Whatever shall we do? Well, you can find, you yeah. can find Concave Usurper at <laughs> Planet Earth. Planet yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Fresno lives somewhere within in, in a cross space between one dimension that's very much the modern day and another dimension that's Fuel Japan. <laughs> I'd wow, you, I'm really I'd, glad that I moved. You could have doxxed me right there for I'd us. say where I live, but they don't believe me anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, you live God. in Texas. Texas uh, is a real place. It's not Texas. <laughs> it's not Texas. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I mispronounced it. Tejas. <laughs> yeah, still not a real place. <laughs> so what's Sam well, Texas, Spade here uh, doing? Actually, it's Sam Gardner, but you know. Sam Garda, yes. Um, but he's basically um, he's basically a Deshul Hammett character. Mm-hmm. I mean, he literally don't know is. what that is. He's a writer. Don't know what that is. You've never heard of the Maltese Falcon. Uh, Maltese Falcon is overrated, or at the very least, don't know the what that is. Mm. We are just covering all the hot takes today. I love it. Uh, Look, there there are only two writers that I know about, and that's Jerry and that's Sean. So, oh, thank you. The only important ones. <laughs> you also know Chris, Chris, huh? Yes, this is this is Wolf Erasure. But he is basically the. Oh yeah, Krista too. I know three writers. <laughs> Edge to kill rising. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, He's essentially... Ray, do you write? You do? What have you written? I Can I read I haven't it? Been published yet. I haven't been published yet. Hmm. So... Uh, he's not published. No, I ah, keep, I keep wow. trying to write a novel and then getting distracted. Yep, I've been there. It's like you're it's getting quick. distracted right now. Maybe this is the motivation I need, being, uh, yeah. being in, a, in, a, in a podcast with two published authors. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> Garner is, is a detective. I love that laugh. I love See, that that's a very evil laugh. I love that laugh. <laughs> and that destroys Fresno's entirely. Man. Well, I, well, I, oh, I turn. <laughs> <laughs> it peaked the microphone twice. Zero out of ten. <laughs> wah, wah. Welcome mm. to the Doctor Who podcast, where we just spend the entire time cackling evilly into the microphones. Well, it's either that or talk about Chris Chibnall, and I don't think any of us wants to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Chris Please, Chib- no. Chris Chibnall was two episodes We're before finally this done was with safe. Him. I mean, let me see which ones are left. <laughs> oh, oh, there are several. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, hey, yeah, Chris Chibnall. Honey, I, I, Sean, Sean, Sean. I said troll us, not destroy us. <laughs> You you didn't um you didn't specify that. It's too late. Shit. <laughs> Shit. So Sam Gardner is meeting this guy about statues. Yeah. He's meeting a mobster about statues. You know the worst part is this guy kind of reminds me of the not quite Donald Trump from uh Chibnall era. Oh god. Uh, right. I was gonna say he reminded me of Nero Wolf, but What? Yeah. What's the name of the actor? Oh, God. Hmm. Is it Maury Chase? No. Yeah, Maury Chase. Anyways. Kind of reminds me of him. But um, he's, he's a mobster. He's a gangster type. And uh, he gives uh, Garner an address. An apartment block near Battery Park. Interesting name. Called Winter Key. Yeah, Living Statues. Oh, which I totally did not pronounce the entire time. Li- living... Why is it spelled with a Q? I, I don't it's know. Weird. It's really weird. Why spelled with Languages Q? are weird. I called it Winter Quay the entire time until they finally said it was Winter Key, and I was like, oh. Well, I feel Winter, Winter Quay? Ra- Rainiac, Rainiac, you feel the same way about Creme Quay in uh, 
Donkey Kong Country 2. I said Kui, it's Creme K. Yeah. Or, 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 what? What? Fuck it. Yeah. Right. It's Winter, Winter key. key. It's pronounced Key. It's pronounced Key as in a door key, but Winter Key. And um, we keep hearing mention of uh, living statues. So we all know what this means because, of course, it's called the Angels Take Manhattan. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little obvious. But he goes through a door and sees his older self. Oh no, whatever shall he do? Die. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. No, 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 not die. Live. Forever. Well, his, his older self dies. Mm. Yeah, it, it's one of those, like, if you see the thing happening in the future, then it's definitely going to happen, and so now you just know it's going to happen. This is one of the most terrifying things. concepts, I think, in fiction. Yeah, it's basically pre Termination fiction is freaking terrifying. There is no free will. You are trapped in a story. The idea of seeing yeah. your older self die in front of your eyes is just horrific. <laughs> so he, he, he tries to escape. I mean, on the hand, I would want to know. Just saying. I don't think anyone would, would they? I want to know. Because then I would be able to know how I'm going to die and I could prepare for it. I don't want to know when, I just want to know how. Would you really want to know, though? I mean... Oh, I mean, there's yeah. that collection, that short story collection. Uh, what was it? I forget, what, was it uh, the XKCD guy or Ryan North who did that? The, the one with the machine of death? No idea. Yeah, yeah okay, uh, hold on. I'm going to look this up because yeah, you, you it's look that up. One, from my, one from my childhood. It's, it's a book about where a machine prints out, this is how you're going to die. Oh, God. I mean, like oh, that's Minority Report, I think. No, not... No, that's no, Minority this, Report. No, is, uh, this is, this is the, the crime you're going to commit in the future. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, it's Ryan North. It's called The Machine of Death. It's it's a various ways of doing it, including but not limited to suicide, starvation, vegetables, not <laughs> waving but drowning, love ad nauseum, cancer, killed by Daniel, nothing, Wait, who's Daniel? Mm -hmm. Indeed. It's by Ryan... It's a short story collection done... Edited by Ryan North of Dinosaur Comics and... And Squirrel Girl fame. Neat. Huh. I, am very I, I will say, though, Minority P Report is kind of like that, because it was all about predestination and the crimes you were going to commit. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan, Minority Report is more about out the implications of being the person who is going to commit the crime rather than and the actual well, potential ways you could die. So there are some loopholes in there that Golden Age sci-fi is watching. Well, yeah, but it's, it still but has the same theme. The lens of it has the same death. theme of this person is going to do this. Yeah, it's but the difference is in Minority Report, the goal is to prevent that from happening. So oh, the various yeah. killers are prevented before they can do the killing, whereas this is about yeah. this is how you're going to die. I, I, like, like I actually came up with one as a kid where it was machine error here, where basically this guy is going, what does it mean for machine error? He spends the whole story just wondering the implications of it, and then he gets hit by a car, or, and we cut back to the uh, machine of death, and it's revealing that the machine of death just had machine error. <laughs> oh my god. Error. <laughs> and then it prints out the funny. right one, which is hit by a truck shortly after her receiving a machine error. Oh my god. Uh, well, what a fun collection. Yeah, it's a absolutely delightful, right in high school. It does sound... And Sam really Gardner's oh, car from the machine read, uh, I had to read Fahrenheit 451. Never read that in high school, but we did have to read the Iliad five different times. <laughs> Ugh, I am so uh, sorry. I Everyone hated it every single time. We read Macbeth, so you know that was that was okay. The Iliad and the Aeneid. And I the got Aussie. Romeo and Juliet. So it's what I happens know. when they still teach Latin in schools over here. Uh, yeah, Latin well, is a pretty interesting course. At least you don't have to speak the language. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> there's a reason why it's called a dead language. But back to um, Sam Garner. Then we get to our first major elephant in the room of this story. Oh boy! He flees to the to the roof, <laughs> turns around, and here's the Statue of Liberty. 
Let's I hate this so much. I hate it. I, hate I mean, it. given I hate what it. the episodes of what the episodes conceit is about, it makes sense. But at the same time, you feel like it would probably be better saved for when Amy and Rory see the Statue of Liberty. Then yeah. for this one, whereas here it would work better with a, oh shit, this what the fuck is that moment? Yeah, you, you think, yeah, yeah but they, uh... here's here's my main problem with the Statue of Liberty being a weeping angel. New York is known as the city that never sleeps. Mm -hmm. How did nobody see this fucking thing? How did oh, nobody simple. hear no, this thing? Oh, simple. There is there are no visuals and there are no sounds in a book. They are all trapped in a novel. We are just seeing the audio, the audiovisual adaptation of it. Yeah, he's right. <sighs> I, I still don't like it. It's, yeah, I, I, I'm weird on it because, like, when we did the Angel retrospective, I basically went like, I, I can't defend this, and so I'm not going to try. It. And then I said some other shit. I made the I made the uh, interesting observation of that. If the, the Statue of Liberty is a weeping angel, then every movie that ever has had the Statue of Liberty in it has killed people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because the image of an angel becomes itself an angel. You're just watching, yeah. you're just watching like, then the example I used in a, the retrospect was Ghostbusters 2. So the scene where they're, dro they're piloting it with a Nintendo controller, that will kill you in the Doctor Who universe. <laughs> yeah, uh, but here's also the other thing. In the elevator, there's a big picture of the Statue of Liberty. That's a, automatically a weeping angel. That's a yeah. weeping angel. That's a You're weeping right. angel. Yeah, it's how they mark their territory. They own the hotel because they have this image of an angel in it. But still, I, I just, I, I can't get behind this. It's like, it makes no sense whatsoever. And it, to me, it's just a continuation of Moffat deciding to screw with something that doesn't need to be screwed I'm, I'm terribly with. sorry, but when, when Sean said the angels own the hotel, I just got this image of uh, the angels playing Monopoly. <laughs> I mean, they'd probably be the better players at it. I mean, you have to be a monster in order to play Monopoly. Wow. I play Monopoly. Thank you. You play it well. Oh, God. All the hot like, takes. Just all the okay, hot takes. Okay, but I, I, while I recognize that Cat's take is uh, valid in many ways, I, uh, I cannot deny that I fucking love it when Moffat screws with shit. It's a great visual, but... Sean makes a good point that they that they reveal it far too soon. Yeah, and also it's it a great been a visual shot, for the yeah. sake of being a great visual. It doesn't actually it's do a book anything. Cover. It's, to use another we image of the Statue of Liberty, it's like the poster for Escape from New York. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or a uh, fucking Cloverfield. But Which was ripping off Escape from New York. Ah, there you go. That's that explains everything. Well, that's literally one well, of the impetus for it. How did the Statue of Liberty's head fall into New York City? This monster that I mean, J.J. It's, it's, like uh, it's not like they took Planet of the Apes and decided to plaster the uh, Statue of Liberty all over the front cover of that at any point in time. I mean, that's, sure. pretty, much, that's pretty much why they changed the ending for the 2002 remake to be this, the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, I was wrong. We were dead all along. Uh, so Charlton Heston looks away to, to pound the sand, but before he even does, he's sent back a thousand years in time. <laughs> well, the good news is he's back home. Oh my mm. god, sure. The bad news is he's in the middle of the ocean. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Just the, the Statue of Liberty thing, it always takes me out of this episode because it's like, ser seriously, they can hear it stomping and yet nobody else notices. It parks itself next to this building and nobody notices. It's yeah. moving even while, you know, again, city that never sleeps. It's gigantic. Mm -hmm. Like, do you really think that somebody is not going to notice that the Statue of fucking Liberty is gone? <laughs> it, it makes... it's it's. I, I will sum it up best with the uh, infamous quote from Knives Out. It makes no damn sense. Compels me, though. Poetry often w trumps um, logic for most writers. I, I don't know. For me, it's just like, I can... I have that suspension of disbelief, but there comes a point where you put the giant fucking Statue of Liberty in the middle of New York City. Well, Kat, it could be worse. The moon could be an egg. Oh, don't... Not, uh, I knew you were going to say that, and I hate you. I mean, you. the alternative is, well... Doctor Who could be the progenitor of all time lords. <laughs> As if that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, it's not oh. like the doctor goes and kills a TARDIS because, you know, they're sentient and everything or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she uh, faced down a capitalist system and then said that the system wasn't the problem, but rather people were. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It could be that the idea of Lawrence Miles had a while back, which I probably shouldn't name. Oh, dear. <laughs> I mean, we won't see more about it, right? It could be worse. They could take a white actor and put him in the yellow face. <laughs> or they could uh, dress up a... a, a South Asian actor in a Nazi uniform and have him be take heroically taken away by the SS. Yeah, that's uh, it. Oh. <laughs> God, that was messed well, up. Film some actual real life execution, but probably not. Put it on camera, but why would they even film it? Uh, lack of taste. Somewhere lack of out taste. there is a deleted scene of somebody getting executed. Uh. Oh, I know. They can have the doc. They can have Doctor Who say the N word. Ugh. Did that actually happen? Celestial toy maker. I oh uh, well, well, well what? <laughs> so, anyways, we're we move forward to 2012 in New York City, where we've got the Doctor Amy and Rory having a and nice picnic while to my the phone Doctor reads out. <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> I I I did not know this because I've never seen the Celestial toy maker. Do you want me to make it the next one? We you do? Well, you can't. No. <laughs> It's not complete, thank God. Lucky, lucky bastards. It's, it's, we have some rules at the very least. Yes, we routinely break them, but we do have rules. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not laugh again. Yeah, uh, the, yes. the Amy. God, I'm so broke, I just called it the Amy. The Amy Doctor and Rory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amy and Rory the Pawns. We love them. Nice to bring about that, sure. Good job. Uh, <laughs> we, we get a bit of teasing between the Doctor and Amy because Amy's got reading glasses now and he, 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 he complains about the lines on her, her face. I, lo I love older. Rory. I love Rory here. It's like, Rory, have you noticed them? No, I no, I didn't notice them. I definitely didn't notice the lines on your face. <laughs> I noticed that I did notice them. I'm going to go get coffee. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, poor Rory. He gets shit on so often. He, it's particularly in this, in this particular episode as well, but um, he's just going out for coffee. He may be some time. And a then, long time. Well, Which, okay, and... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I got a nitpick again. <laughs> this is New York City. It is the city that never sleeps. And you're telling me that in this episode, Rory had to go that far to find some fucking coffee. Yes, that actually tracks with my experiences with New York City in relation to Central Park. Seriously? Yeah. yeah the, I mean, there are some areas of Central Park where they are, where there is a lot of coffee stands, but if you, but they tend to be extremely expensive because, dear God, because Central Park is well a park, so a lot of people tend to get do increase the prices at parks. So you probably. Given where they were, they were probably nearby one of the fancier restaurants, so he'd probably have to walk at least east. Uh, let's see, carry the two about 15 blo uh, 12 blocks. Blocks, Jesus. All right, yeah, Ryan, you're yeah. definitely fired, and we're bringing on Sean because he can fact check everything. <laughs> I don't even get to the fact check it out. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that you had to find out this way. <laughs> what freaking good am I? Uh, Alas, poor Raniac. I knew him. That's probably. what I'm saying. Good God. No, no, no. Here, here's what he's good for. You're good for reacting very strongly when Cat hits a certain button on her soundboard. We're getting to that. <laughs> Wrong button. No, that was exactly the button I meant. Oh, right. You're also good at not saying the word mirror. <gasps> Did someone say mirror? That doesn't count. Doctor Who. Okay, it does apparently mirror have. Alert. Doctor Who. Mirror alert. <laughs> uh... Anyway, the, the Doctor uh, makes himself an enemy to authors the world over by ripping out the last page of a book. Mm. Except he doesn't. Oh, you mean this one? He, it's that he doesn't actually write the last page of the book if you if you look carefully. 
Mm. Yeah, he rips out like the last the middle. two pages. He rips yeah, out a page in the middle, basically. He hmm. doesn't like endings. And it's actually and so... it's actually a a copy of the Thin Man. Hmm. Of course, it was. I don't know why it was the Thin Man, but it was. <laughs> they didn't want to make like their own their own prop book, I guess. Even though they well, then you have to hire somebody to novelize the episode, and they weren't doing Doctor Who novelizations at the time. That said, I would absolutely love to novelize this episode. I have ideas. There is actually a um, a novelization mm. of the story within the the, the episode. I, I gotta know how meta would it be, Sean? The annotated angels kiss. Oh my god, that's I, I want this to be a thing right now. Please. So, yeah, there would be um, so I'm hearing this like, no. Russell T. Davis, if you're if you're hiring for an expanded universe, uh, Sean's here. I mean, I also I'm... have that Clara collection that I would love to edit. Sean's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you would like this to be an actual thing, Sean's PayPal is. Was <laughs> more dogs at Ymail. He even had that ready. My God. <laughs> we, we're dealing with a professional here, but Doctor Who does. I not want like work. Anything. Give me work. Give money. <laughs> I'm in mood, but um... <laughs> I spent thousands of dollars going to Comic Con. I need money. <laughs> well, may, may, maybe it's finally time for me to hire you to edit the Symphony Gear book. <laughs> Yes, maybe it is. <laughs> and while we're at, we can also do that Sailor Moon book, the Twin Peaks book that you work on, and for good measure, Inuyasha. Oh, and while we're on the subject of the books, uh, how's that Star Wars thing coming along? <laughs> he just dropped about five projects we didn't know about. That's <laughs> <laughs> he dropped at least. Well, he, he only dropped like what one project you didn't know about because it hasn't been started. Does he rain? It's perfectly fine, Rain, because unlike Colin Baker, he's not under an NDA. <laughs> I'm not even hired. Fresno hasn't paid me yet. No. You need money to do that. He's going to pay you just to show about it so it becomes a secret again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Doctor Who does not like endings and so rips the final pages out of the book. This will be a important theme. And, for the and do so in case it means you find in the library. And... <laughs> No, no, no. The refuse, the uh, refusal to let things end. Yeah, to be is, like, oh no. A, a if theme. I take out, if I take out the ending, it can go on forever. It's a common theme that we um, we revisit several times in this story, and we kind of got a little bit of it in the one we did last week as well. The God Complex. So we did. Obviously, somebody just needs to give him a copy of the Never Ending Story. Never Ending Story. Never uh, ending story. Uh, I've never actually seen that movie. Neither have I. And he sings I know as well. I feel wholly inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Already I have two movies that I want you guys to watch with me just because, holy crap, I can't believe they exist. We're adding Never Ending Story to that just to make sure that you two actually watch it. I think and I the others are... Lamageddon and I'm... fucking... No, we've, we've seen... We've seen. We've seen those two. I'm saying there are two more I want you to see. See, And those are... Is one of them Night Beast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling. One fear. <laughs> well, well, two uh, fears. To the Star Trek podcast, given some recent announcements. Is, is oh. one fear that there's Night Beast by a chance? Two fears. Two fears. <laughs> I will so, say, I'm kind of wavering on another movie, which is called Vampire Dog. Is the vampire dog a corgi? No, it is not. Three things. <laughs> that is not one of the special two that I'm thinking about. That's one that I'm kind of wavering on. I see. Well, uh, so going back to the whole idea of fictionality and this being a book, uh, Rory suddenly finds himself in the book. With a very familiar face. Oh, no. Hello, I, I love the reveal. It's like he's being stalked by... A statue that's giggling, and then the doctor perks up as he's reading to Amy, and it's just like he reads the sentence that says that Rory is in the book. I yeah. was like, what? He describes him as the thin man. The thin man says to Melody, I was just getting comfortable with the doctor and Amy. Hello, River. Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, this is a great reveal. I, 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 
I should mention, uh, given that we are talking about uh, metafictionality and becoming fictional, that in Shadow of the Gallifreyan, uh, the story that John wrote for was The Mind Robber. Yes, I did one. Yeah, I did a story about the author of The Mind Robber coming back and trying to basically having writer's block, trying to figure out what story he's going to write. Oh, my God. Like, and he, he almost creates Doctor Who. That's amazing. miserably. <laughs> It, it, it was good awesome. It was a good story. I had which a you can find you in this go book. Mind robber, because I, given your your uh, your liking for meta, I kind of thought <laughs> you might go for it. But I'm so glad you did. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised no one else did that at the time. They gave me fucking caves of Androzani. I got <laughs> fandom's precious little jewel. I could have crushed it between my fingers, but I, I played rather nice. Well, well to, you held in your hand, and, and, how's the speech go? Oh, to hold in your hand, and with the tiniest pressures. Yes, oh, no, I would no, do yeah, it, just, and that yeah, power would set me above the gods! Right, right, god damn it, I want to do the speech. <laughs> you know, on, to hold in your hand a capsule that contains such power, to know that life and death on such a scale was your choice. To know that the tiny pressure of your thumb, um, enough to break the glass, would end everything. Yes, you would do that. That power would set you above, up above the gods, and through the caves of Anjazani, you shall have that power! We are not worthy. God damn. Are you sure you're a writer and not an actor? Oh, absolutely. I can't memorize scripts to save my fucking life. <laughs> I mean, neither could, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Christopher Walken. He still is an actor. True. And probably the same for or Marlon Brando, come to think of it. <laughs> Christopher Walken, the one man who kept a bomb film afloat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Walken, who's an amazing dancer. Yes, weapon of choice. Yes, uh, Christopher Walken. The best part of Pulp Fiction and the worst part of True Romance. Wow, the hot takes continue. Christopher Walken. He was... He was in the dead zone. <laughs> so was Um, Where were we? Oh, yeah. Um, Rory's now found River. Going by the in name Me Melody Malone. Which again, I love. I love that that uh, alias for her. Yes, the allure of double M's. Mm. And also melody. Yeah, using her real Which... name and a fake name. That sounds like it fits perfectly in with this with the um, literary noir that we're spoofing here. Huh? It's really that's we're in a book. The lies that tell the truth. You Truth are, that tells lies. You are too good, my God. Uh, <laughs> um, and so I'm, they get uh, taken away by the mobster's man. Grail is the mobster's name. Julius and, Grail, another great name. Mm -hmm. Moffat seems to be good at that. Uh, and to think he only came up with River Song thanks to a pun. Pun about wanting a River Song ending. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean to be fair even despite my past you know like Moffat Arab thing going on he is still a very good writer yes yes and, uh, and, yes, and whenever I do the newsletter with David I have to remind myself don't include Clara knowledge Sean <laughs> so River explains a little bit of the plot here like who Grail is and where they're being taken to and then we cut back to Amy and Rory, uh, sorry, the Doctor and Amy. Got ahead of myself. And um, the Doctor immediately tells her to stop reading the book because if you read it, it'll become true. Well, yes. it should, yeah, it should also be mentioned they tried to go to 1938, but they bounce off it because of timey-wimey fuckery. I love that yeah, you're going too yes. far ahead in the book. Yeah. Which, they just hit the floor. Also, yeah. it could be, so you now know. The doctor, the doctor knows that he has to break something, and the reason he has to break that thing is because Amy read ahead of the book. 
Or more it's interestingly, a, he has to say the line, and, and he has to cause River to say the line. Why do I have to break mine? Yeah. Yeah. And, and he responds with, you, get, you only have to read the line. And, and that seems to be what the, was initially going to happen before he read the chapters. Yeah. And of course, the particular line that he gives here, which is like, once you read something like this, it's a fixed point. It's written in stone, which... Yeah. Incredible. No matter, how many times you, no matter how many times you watch the episode, it will always end the exact same way. Amy will always end up in the past. Rory will always get interrupted mid-sentence. And the Statue of Liberty will always be an angel. <laughs> oh my god. Unless you watch the Clue movie, in which case, who knows what ending you're going to get. <laughs> it's all three. Wait. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen... Yeah, it's all three. You, you, Nowadays. The thing with Clue is that when it first came out, you got a random ending, A, B, or C. Oh, I know that, but it tended... But whenever I tried to do the randomization on my DVD, it always gave me Miss Scarlet. Yeah. <laughs> You can do a single random ending on the DVD, or you can just do what they always do with TV uh, showings and play all three together. Beautiful. That's not what happened. Honestly, I think that's happened. the best option, just because then you could choose which ending you prefer. And also, you can yeah, which the means that the ending. ending, the actual ending of Clue, is they all did it. <laughs> of course. I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife, Chief. So they will have always <laughs> all done that, and Mr. Blue will always be always be straight. Oh my gosh. Mr. Blue, Mr. Green, but yes. Mr. Green, Mr. Green, right. God damn, I love that movie. I love that film as well. You speak in my uh, language. Yeah. Yeah. favorite. Mrs. Peacock was a man? <laughs> <laughs> Flame, I Flame hated him so much. Flame was the side of my face. Well, I'm a burning, heaving. Heaving and breaths. <laughs> And then there was also, uh, I'm shouting, I'm shouting, I'm shouting, I'm thunk! Yes. <laughs> the kettles are just rubbing on top of the door frame. I have no idea what's going on right now, but these people seem to be enjoying it. You've well, to make a long story short. Too late. Okay, you're well, going to have to edit that. Okay, <laughs> take two. This time everyone does it. Well, to make a long story short. I've already done it, so I'm okay. <laughs> God damn it. I don't know the bit. <laughs> you, you've, you've managed to bring me back into my own podcast by bringing in Clue, so thank you so much for that, Sean. Uh, Brainiac, you're high oh, yes. again. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! So yes, the, the Doctor and Amy can't actually land the TARDIS because there's a whole bunch of time distortions going on. It, it Even River is like, they, they would never be able to do it because it's tr like trying to land a plane in a blizzard. There's a whole bunch of so... convenience going on. It's what's going on here. So they get bounced off and they get bounced back to 2012 and for some reason they land in a cemetery. I'm yeah, sure that know. won't be important at any point. No reason at all. Oh. But the, no way. The well, way they get well, there are some graves in New York City from um, the grave of Michael Corleone to the grave of Tucker Carlson's career. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice now. Wait, 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 wait. He had a career? Yes, he made life miserable for everyone else. He, he will that come back job. from this, I'm sorry to say. He'll, you say that like Tucker Carlson sure he'll have is a also podcast. a miserable, miserable man. He'll go independent. He'll have a podcast. Maybe he, OAN will hire him. OAN. Oh, one angry numpty. Honestly, uh, if anybody hires Tucker Carlson, it'll probably be, uh, what's his face, Alex Jones? Maybe he'll run for president. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I think I just opened my mouth a little. I mean, we, I mean, we all made the jokes about Donald Trump. Why not? This is a hell world where everyone is gonna die horribly. Did Dwayne There's the Rock the Johnson hell. save us? <laughs> Unfortunately, Dwayne appears. I think Dwayne is registered Republican. Is he? No. Uh, I can see. Or that, the very or at the very least, his presidential plans have been and pushed aside because Black Adam failed miserably. I, I can see uh, that because he did work with Vince McMahon for a number of years. So. Well, I mean, the next thing he plans to do is live-action Moana, so, you know, that's going to go great. Oh, God help us. Uh, well, so, so uh, River and Rory are brought to Grail, and Grail is immediately like uh, this one. Make him uncomfortable. Yeah, And, and they, they throw him into the, the basement. basement. With, with a the bunch babies. of matches. And the box of matches. 
because it's funny. I <laughs> this is actually kind of a great scene again, much like the the Statue of Liberty. The cherubs don't really serve much purpose, but they look cool. Yeah, I I like the cherubs. The cherubs are actually an interesting idea because you can find those all over architecture. Yeah, and if the angels are capable of taking over any statue, that's a good idea. Yeah, the, the Statue of work. Liberty is not. <laughs> and I, the, the way that Rory keeps keeps lighting the matches and then Subi keeps blowing it out. You're like, okay, what's going on here? Then it's like, like there's a draft. And then the final match, and you see the sheriff, literally the sheriff's face with, the, with his lips parted, go, that's Beautiful. really good. Yeah. Doctor Who, meanwhile, is doing some bullshit with a uh, Ming Dynasty vase. Early chin, but yes. It's funny because. Uh, when they go, when he goes to China to get the uh, vase and all this shit, you see China 221 BC, but it's stylized. You know, instead of a giant impact font, yellow letters. Yes. White letters. White letters in, in impact font. <laughs> I I still I it was it wasn't the impact font, but I still flash back to that uh, Pitt Madeley shit post he did of um putting more and more subtitles on part one of Spyfall. Okay, okay, but like Chibnall actually was kind of in on that joke in Power of the Doctor when they kept cutting the volcanoes. Yeah, true. Like, he was in on it. He was self-aware at that point. But uh... At this point, just give somebody a label maker and they start labeling everything in the scene. That's true. I- I'm sorry, but but um, like putting more and more um, captions on it, putting more captions on it, like you've got Stephen Fry, National Treasure, then it cuts to the scene in Australia, it goes, the Master's TARDIS, and it cuts away, shit, sorry, and all the previous captions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I so, love meta While Rory there. is dealing with that shit, uh, Grail and River are talking about a weeping angel. Oh, this. The, the chained up weeping angel. Poor what a good idea for this guy to have a chained up weeping angel. Just Yes, because it always ends well when you t- chant the thing that will eat your face. And we're checking the death it's machine. even worse because he's damaged it. And when asked about he says, I want to know if it can feel pain. And we're checking the death machine for Julius Grail and it just says leopards. Yep. I mean, it was either that or the Dalek, which some billionaire from America bought. From, well, yeah. Utah. I still, so, some yeah, Utah I still billionaire love that episode, despite its implications. I From Utah, that. Utica, somewhere beginning with a U. Beautiful. I still really like that that uh, script, by the way. But um, yeah. it's a good story. You read the novelization? I have not. Is it better or worse? I'd say it's better. I, I do know from the uh, the uh, research I did for the for the podcast on that particular episode that they added um the fact that the one is it Shepherd? She was actually uh, with... secretly partners with the head of security that got killed. So, mm-hmm. and yeah, there are a few other details that they add. Like they make the uh, Bru- what's the actor's name? Uh, Bruno Langley. Bruno Langley. Mars? Bruno Langley. That's it. Bruno yeah, Mars. Bruno... Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, my first instinct was Bruno Mars. <laughs> <Or anyway. laughs> yeah, the Bruno Langley character was basically a oh shit, I am fucked. Fuck sort of guy. I can't believe I get to say this. We don't, we don't talk about Bruno Langley. Uh, uh, Christ. So many people you don't talk about. So many people. Yeah. We, we, I wonder we if I should make... We don't talk about Bruno. I, no, I, that's no, what no. I was, oh, that's, fuck that's, you. That movie stopped. <laughs> that's what I was referring to, but I was doing it without singing it. I know. I got and the God joke. Those sucks. <laughs> that was the equivalent, Cat. That was the equivalent of trying to snipe the third match. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sure, oh, this is almost two, as good as me continuously to teach uh, or torture Chris with uh, Frozen stuff. Sure, and I come up with two references to it. Everyone's happy. Cackles with a perfect good film. Everyone goes, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. That's because it's me. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say? Chris doesn't like Frozen stuff? Chris does not like Frozen stuff. Oh, you should tell him. like. Think- I was watching Candy with a bunch of middle schoolers. It's not good. Oh dear. That, uh, that doesn't sound like an experience. I, I do like it. Uh, it's about the uh, same experience you'd expect for middle schoolers. Fair. Yeah. Uh, going back to yeah. Doctor Who then. 
I do like that they they basically use it. Moffat uses an old trick from uh, for the Pandora Opens actually to send a message to River. But mm-hmm. the message is yowza, so maybe I don't like it so much. Yowza. <laughs> do not yowz. <laughs> Under any circumstances, do not yowz. You may yowza once. You owe the yowza world starring James Bond. <laughs> I will hold that. I will hold that. <laughs> but that does you may get yowza Dr. once I'm out of the room. That that does get Doctor Who Stardust to land at Grail's and knock him the fuck out. But not before Grail manages to intimidate River by getting the angel to grab her wrist. Yeah, he, he turns the lights out, and when the lights come back on, the angel has got her by the wrist. Tight. And it's like, you're gonna tell me everything I want to know about this angel. Why does she not go back in time, by the way? Not enough power. The angel is too weak. Okay, I, I will buy that. Well, no, see, that brings out the other option. Why didn't she use her Vortex Manipulator? And the answer I have is probably the angel would go with her. Yeah, it's, a good it's answer. touching. It's probably a fair and they'll probably give the angel some power. Yeah, probably. We would want to do that. I'm trying to think back when, they, <laughs> when the Vortex Manipulator was used in previous stories and future stories as well with Kalara, if they had to be actually holding on to the person that was using it or they had their own. Uh, no, I'm was... pretty sure they did because uh, Missy used one and she had to hold on to Clara to be able to use it. Yeah. So it would take if, if she gave Clara her own. No, nope. or... she, no, she just grabbed Clara and Flat and right, and I okay, watched so, yeah. watched it recently. The angel would have taken quite reasonably. Yes. <laughs> if I had it. a dollar for every single time Raniac didn't trust what I was saying, I'd have. Well, I'd be a billionaire by now. <laughs> well, whereas I would probably have two dollars, which isn't a lot. But it's weird that's happened twice. twice. Yeah. If, if I had a foot for every time we talked about Missy and Clara in this episode, I'd have twenty feet. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, Doctor I, Who arrives I mean, in a. In a uh, <laughs> if I had a woman for every single time a certain Doctor Who person has touched one. I'd oh have no. Women. No. Oh, God. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I know you're not. That's the worst part. Uh, <laughs> the worst part is the lack of remorse. Uh, but yeah, Grail gets knocked out by the TARDIS and left to his fate. He's terrified uh, of the angels because he's, he's got so many locks on his door, and yet he has an angel in with him. He's yeah. smart. Uh, and this is where the doctor, he comes in. Uh, I love this because Amy's about to go out and the doctor's like, uh, just making some final checks final checks and he's doing up his hair and he's looking in like and i'm sorry he's looking in the reflective surface to make sure he looks good all right Which, i mean when you have to bring your mother in for a date it's kind of a rough date night you better look nice yes doctor who mirror alert doctor who mirror alert doctor who mirror alert I mean, are all surfaces mirrors? Mm. That's the first real mirror alert because the first the, the, the first one we did was just Sean saying the word mirror. But um, is that what saying the word mirror? Mirror, 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 mirror alert! Whoop 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 whoop. I walked right into the pile of shit that was left for me. <laughs> just right into it, it yes. first. <laughs> You didn't so much walk into it as you slipped on the banana peel and landed face first into it. Yes. Pretty much, yes. Emotional damage! And physical damage, too. But, um... Beautiful. So, the doctor is very confident and, you know, his usual self as he's talking to River about the... Things change pretty quickly here. Yeah, so we, we get more exposition from, from River, and uh, she's no longer a wanted criminal, because the person she killed never existed. Now, how did that happen? Something, something, the silence. No, uh, actually, he um, he went through uh, the records of raising his his, uh, his, his uh, existence. And he did that because something, something, the silence. Yeah, he got, he got too big, Dorian, yeah, too So noisy. I'm still fucking right. Give me another fucking dollar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be broke by the end of this episode. Uh, uh, there are some interesting things here, like I mean, the uh, chapter cheating. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, the chapter cheating. Yeah, Amy comes up with a good idea that turns out to not be a good idea. Yeah. Which basically sums up that every idea, every decision people make in this story is what it appears Wait. to be a good idea at the first, and then it isn't. Hey, but, hey, Rainiac, let's be honest. This, every decision ever made in Doctor Who is a good idea that turns out to be a terrible idea. That's true, but especially so in this. Yeah. So many times they make decisions like, this is a good idea. Oh, God, wait, no, we've made it worse. And yeah. River can't get free of the angel. They're going to break the angel's wrist or break River's wrist. But the doctor says, no, you're not breaking your wrist because that's in the book. We're changing the book. Find a way out of it that doesn't involve breaking your wrist. Well, you're, you're jumping through the uh, drama a bit. The reason he does this is because... Amy reads the chapters as a little cheat sheet and sees Roman in the cellar and is like, oh, he's in the cellar. And then the doctor has the book and he happens to look and he happens to see the final chapter. Amelia's, Amelia's last, last farewell. Well, yeah. And he's read it. So now it's go It's true. It's immutable. It's fixed. She's going we to We already read. knew that was going to happen, of course. Oh, because, we did. Yes. Yeah, we did. Because we all knew that this was the episode where Amy Pond leaves. We yes. went into this knowing this. Ergo, there's no other way this could be. And we are all the trapped first time in the story. I saw it, I didn't know. We, we just did. You write as many fan fictions as you want. This story will always end with Amy Pond leaving the TARS forever. We just didn't yeah. know how it was going to happen exactly, but we knew exactly right. We knew she was leaving. So, we even I, saw again, the again saw when Lord I first Grey. saw this episode, I did not know. I'm so sorry. But, um,. So the point there is like some of us tip. have things to do and then you know constantly look at doctor who news hey i was a teenager in high school what else was i supposed to do <laughs> masturbate this, this is why then the, 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 the doctor wants river to get out of the out of the angel's dress without breaking your wrist because it'll it'll mean that he can change what's in the book of course we know he yeah. can't it's yeah. it, and it is interesting that that point, you know, that it's going to happen because we know what's going to happen. So the fiction is uh, um, is uh, affecting reality in that own way. So anyway, the straight story. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> another time, perhaps, where he's not going to rush to get to his... his uh, another, another time, when I'm not around to hear it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So you know, I have no idea what the straight thing. story is. Could you tell me more about it? No. <laughs> okay. He is so much into the, into the uh, it's in, in tune with this. It's, it's scary. Uh, but oh. River. Next time we see River, she's got out the angel's grip. Hooray. We and did it. The future can be changed. You didn't break your wrist. Let me grab your wrist. Ow. Well, we're all doomed to predestined futures. There is no free will. We are all going to die alone. Good job. We're all stories in the end, and stories have endings. Good job, Riff. Look, just because it's true doesn't mean you have to spell it out loud, Sean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and this is another this is another um, recurring theme with the Doctor. Never let him see you see the damage. And so yeah. Riff was hiding it, but she couldn't because hide it because once again, we are presented with a chamber piece featuring the most fucked up TARS crew yet. You, you say that as if 12 and Clara aren't on our horizon. We haven't had them yet, so this is the most fucked up TARS crew yet. I agree, actually. That's okay. You you know what? You're right. That is true. It is the most fucked up TARS crew yet as of September 2012. When the show was good. <laughs> it was, And it was good. <laughs> It was. It also made me cry. So is it that good? Yes. We'll and, get to that. Oh, we will. And then, Tears eventually. will be shed and, again, most likely. But um. And then Doctor Who uses some regeneration energy to fix River's wrist, yeah. which I'm sure was going to be the explanation for how how uh, uh time of the Doctor happened, but it had to be changed because Chris Eccleston left the show, decided not to take part in the fiftieth. Ah. You know, uh, okay. Yeah. So this this would be. Uh, John Hurt, if he didn't fill in that. Right. Yeah, okay. Huh. That makes sense. But either way, River is like, oh, that was a waste. And then she's like, oh, I love it. She just lifts up her hands like, oh, yes, hands very good. Thank you. Let's test it out. Slap. 
<laughs> you sentimental idiot. What did the five fingers say to the face? Bang. <laughs> and we and I didn't notice that until the. I, I think you wrote about this in Who Watch, where that she throws a line back at him from Wedding of River Song. Yeah, you embarrass me. Yeah, she does. Oh my god. Yeah, and yeah, this is gonna happen. Uh, the Way of River Song gets a lot of callbacks in Doctor Who. Uh, for example, uh, Hellbent has the entire "you are loved" speech inverted towards towards the Time Lords. One could almost say mirrored. Yeah, one could. Oh no, <laughs> Sean, you you said two separate things that you should not have said on this podcast. Hellbent and mirrors. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> start. And Don't start. start. And the lightning bolt goes off, and the people, the people in Newfoundland, like, what, what the hell's happening again? Uh, God, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a storm again. Good, good, good grace, good gracious. So, um, hey, Fritz, which one's better? When, which what's better? Which one's better? Which of what, what are we is just better? talking about? Oh. Mirrors or uh, bent. That's an impossible choice. Impossible. That's an impossible choice for an impossible girl. Oh. Obviously, you put hell bent in a mirror. Oh my god. See? There you go. That's my answer. You will never leave. Never leave. Never leave. Never leave. Never leave. Never leave. Yeah. But, um... Well, the good news is that Rory's uh, at, well, it, I don't suppose it's good news. The good news is that he hasn't been taken out of time. He's just been put in Winter Key. Yeah, the bad news is we see his oldest son. He's been put in Winter Key. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and before that, of course, uh, Grail fucking just gets his shit eaten. Off, off camera again, but yes. Just, just gets just gets completely it, It's It's off. deserved. It's very much deserved. We, we just see him oh, get come we never Oh, come on, Cat. Grail is not entirely villainous. We never see the moment actually happen. Hmm? That would that would be a day of the doctor, but um... Yeah. The moment has been prepared for yeah. in Legopoli. Ah. <laughs> very good. I think um, I brought that one. I think I brought that theory up on the show before, and we haven't even done Legopolis. No, maybe yes, we will next week. Maybe we will next week. Well, well uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are talking about. The moment is from the day of the Doctor. I no. said that. We're, we're making it's it's a gag about one of the, the last thing that Tom Baker says before he regenerates. Yeah, that's that's his last that's uh, his last words. It's the end. His last line is it's the end, but the moment has been prepared for. Which is iconic when you think about it. And also, you yes, know, you I, can... I was making a joke about the day of the doctor. Good, mm. good, good, good gag, good gag. Anyway, we'd have to do, we'd have to do keeper I, tracking I before we do like the I feel like I'm being condescended to, just a little bit. The groundhog day of the doctor, if you will. Um, hey. I, this time, I'm not apologizing. So yeah, Rory finds finds his older self, <laughs> who immediately dies. Oh, it's it's even worse than you're saying because they all find Rory in the hotel, and well, Amy and Rory find each other, and then the Doctor and River see an angel, and it's smiling. Yeah. Ugh. Mm. Angel should never smile. Yes, it's very much akin to the smile of a devil you never believed in in the first place. That's poetic. Yes, thank you, Brian Lee Mulligan. <laughs> What's that? Did, what's that? Did someone say the devil? Oh, God. Uh, excuse you, that is the best devil that ever existed. I didn't say it wasn't. No, he didn't, but also, we're not doing best devil, okay? We are not we were... bossing the devil. <laughs> I mean, if we were doing best devil, this is obviously the best devil. What oh, the... my. What in the... I don't know that one. No, me neither. Devil Man Cry Baby. I will show you culture. That's what I thought it was. That's what I thought it was. I wish I rejected. <laughs> um. No, I will I mean, I never said I would reject it. I've still got to watch Power Rangers once in a while. Ways. I've, I've got no chance. Mm. And there's and there's some other stuff that you could watch. You know. 
Yeah, like Simpha Gear. Twin Peaks. So yeah, Power Rangers mm. wasn't always then. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, and then the uh, old Rory calls out to Amy, and Amy comes to his bedside and takes his hand, and then he dies. Yeah, I might be misremembering, but I think we originally initially see old Rory in a mirror. We might. Uh, I. I might. A I'm, proper I'm, mirror. We have fulfilled yeah. our quota, however. So. <laughs> 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 we have a quarter? No, we yes, don't. Yes, <laughs> once per episode, which we've gone over. We've so? done twice, so... What the hell? Anarchy. Do it. Anarchy. Anarchy. Not that. <laughs> Bro, anarchy. <laughs> oh, you want anarchy? Okay. And I... And I think... Oh, God, no. Oh, here it comes. Be. Uh, bah, bah. That was the best way to win that four guy screen ever, by the way. I won't play the whole thing because that'll take forever. And also, we accomplished something! And also gets the Hooray! Trouble, but, um, we accomplished something. Also, Rory's dead again. And the it's the, the whole thing about this is that um, not only is Rory dead, Rory's like, well, okay, but Amy gets sent back with me, right? No, he was, he was, he was surprised to see her again. So, um, you die alone. Um, and it's an immutable fact that's fixed in stone. Well, what about uh, paradoxes? But if you well, do that, you'll be running for your entire life. Better or you'd have to join the... I mean, you could run for your entire life, or you could just fall into some weird, weird subculture of Doctor Who fandom that is obsessed with paradoxes and, for some uh, depressing reason, voodoo. Ah, uh, yes. Voodoo. I have so many questions that I do not want answered. The 90s were weird. They really were. Uh, I have only barely scratched the surface of what John's talking about here. And... Why, why don't you join a mainstream religion like Oprahism or Voodoo? Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh, Larry Miles, you strange, strange little man. You crazy bastard. I, I don't know why, but somehow I feel that I'm very lucky to have no idea what we're talking about right now. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it to be, in his defense, it's not the worst thing the not the wilderness have provided us. The worst thing was what he tried to do with uh, compassion. No, that would be William Blake. Or the first novel of the wilderness. Okay, those are pretty bad too. Okay, um... We then get a really cool set piece where the angels are chasing our uh, four heroes through the hotel because Rory's going to have to run from them. But if he successfully escapes, it will cause a paradox and poison the well and all the angels will die. Winter Key will not exist. This is the water and this is the well. Yeah, Water Key is... Uh, uh, sorry, Winter Key is a battery farm. That's why it said battery earlier. Um, for the angels to harvest their victims' energy. Which again... Kind of horrifying when you think about it. And really fucked up. I, lo I love this exchange where it's um, the, the, they split into two pairs of um, husband and wife. So you've got the Doctor and, and River trying to distract the angels and move them away from Amy and Rory. And you've got Amy and Rory. And so Amy says to Rory, husband, run. And then later on you hear go, husband, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's really good. They, they do get the characterization of these four pretty much spot on. So, Amy and Rory end up on the roof, but what's that behind them? Oh my god! It's the Statue of Liberty! Guy Woman! Where, where the hell's the great head of the Samurai Namakubo when you need him? <laughs> now that's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. I'm still not apologizing. Yeah. I don't want you to. Submission. Again, the only place that a giant woman like that should exist. Look at the disco. Well, Shin Ultraman. Yeah, man. And Sentai. Which is the greatest superhero movie of all time. At least until Shin Kamen Rider comes out at the end of May. Right in time for my birthday, so I am what? winning. Hideaki Aino gave you a present, and, and it's, it's and it's fine cinema. 
I mean, there's a Japanese m- movie where um, a, a professional wrestler beats the shit out of a kaiji for 30 seconds. I wonder if there's, there's one where a giant female wrestler does that. <laughs> yes, it's wait, called wait, the wait, 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 wait. What movie? I don't Affair know. Affair of Nablandia. I just know there's footage out there of both that two professional Japanese wrestlers beating the shit out of Kaiji in two separate films. I need to see this. Ew. I'm pretty sure one of those was a dirty pair thing. It could what? have been. Really? But one's Minoru Suzuki, and yes, he gives it a power driver, and the other one's Kota Ibushi. I don't remember the I don't remember the lovely angels pile driving a kaiju. I'm pretty sure it happened in Flash, unfortunately, which means it sucked horribly. Oh, oh great! Uh, but they they do escape or kind of escape because Rory gets a, a great line here. He gets to the roof, being pursued by angels, and he's looking around, out of his you know crazy out of his mind. And then he says, "Can you see your way down?" No, no, but there's a way out. Oh boy! Yeah, here we go. Suicide is nameless. I knew that was it coming. brings on many changes. Do 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 so, do 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 So with do, the giant not Statue of Liberty in the background just staring a hole through them, Rory comes up with a, with a brilliant idea that if he dies now, he can't die inside Winter Key, and that'll create the paradox and kill off all the angels. Hmm. Um, brilliant plan, oh. terrifying plan, because he's literally going to kill himself to save Amy. And yeah, it's and basically he, yeah, it's basically Rory's solution is to create a massive continuity error. Hey, continuity, Doctor Who. I'm shocked. It's not just Rory's entire yeah, character no, Arthur. <laughs> he's going to die eventually. With him dying, coming back to life. Oh, he's going to die eventually, but. Uh, as soon as you think, but he, uh, he gets a b- nice... Before, before you continue on, can I say one very, very nitpicky thing? Sure. So this is another reason why I'd be a fantastic villain in Doctor Who. Um, you have the giant Statue of Liberty. Why couldn't she just, like, hold out her hand and catch them and then send Rory back in time? Because they're trapped in a story, and the story does not allow the Statue of Liberty to do anything other than be a terrifying image. But also, also, oh, I know. This, is, this is, is me being the... horribly nitpicky and just saying, like, this would be a great idea for them to do in order to be able to get out of that. I can, Ding. I can, I can easily justify it. River was looking at the Statue of Liberty when they when they went off the road. There yes, but go. here's the thing: I'm not looking to justify it. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Hmm. You're, I'm it's just like I'm saying titled... this would be why I'd be a great villain in Doctor Who. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so yes, um, Rory hasn't got the the strength. He can't bring himself to fall off the roof himself. He was able to give him a push. He even puts her hand on his chest. This is a really acting scene. It really is. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm getting upset just thinking about it. But um, yeah. And and you know he says you know this place will will be wiped from existence. If this place ever existed, what did I fall off in the first place? And then Amy makes it worse. Yeah, she's not at all. Yep. Once again, Amy has cho- has been given a world where Rory no longer exists and decided to kill herself. Yeah, like Amy's yeah. choice, and she makes her choice here. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, she's Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> at least this time Tatio Max doesn't fucking suck. <laughs> my work here is done, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> didn't tell you something? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Tuxedo t- 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 Mask is not here, thank goodness. Neither are yeah, George Ralph would... or Lizzie. And <laughs> Statue of Liberty, come on now. <laughs> oh, God. There must be other games where you fight the Statue of Liberty, but that's the only two I can think of. Uh, it's probably some, some obscure fighting game where the Statue of Liberty is a character. In fact, there is this clay fighter. I'm sure there's at least one. It's clay fighter. There is a kaiju fighter where he plays yeah. the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I know. Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, the the board game. Uh, something of mayhem. 
I, I think one of the one of the um Clay Fighter fighting games has a statue of liberty as a, as a character. Yeah. You would think you could fight the kaiju with a statue of liberty. Yeah. All, all of these games are angels, by the way. Yeah. Yep. The image of are. angels is an angel and we are all doomed. We're all gonna die. Uh also course, thinking about course. it. Oh no, go ahead. I think the we I think part of why the Weeping Angels got so powerful was because they were, you know, they built the hotel and used the power from the hotel to turn the Statue of Liberty into an angel. So once the hotel no longer exists, the Statue of Liberty is no longer an angel. That makes sense. Plus, it also kills all but you know one angel. Yeah. yeah. But also, They're I was just thinking that now. if um if the whole whatever uh takes on the image of an angel becomes an angel. There are a lot of Doctor Who episodes we can't watch anymore. <laughs> yeah, we. And for we that matter, got toys and posters and books. Hell, with the way this, uh, with the way this podcast is edited, this podcast because <laughs> for sure that Radiac has put images of the angels in the podcast. So, sure. yeah, so I, 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 I the by the time you're listening to this, you're already dead. Of course, the solution is that Rainiac just puts images from Neon Justice Evangelion. <laughs> oh. Rain, uh, you now have to edit it so that each time we mention the Weeping Angel, you put in the actual Weeping Angel, but you put an image of a different angel over top of it. God. So one from Evangelion. Angel, then angel, one that's angel, 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 so, weeping angel, weeping an angel, angel, weeping Buffy, angel, weeping 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 Angel from Tekken. Hang on, y'all. I, I okay. also request that at one point, instead of an angel, you put an angle. By the way, I'm not sorry. Oh, God. Oh, you God, should be. Yes. 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 You should be, but yeah. Through the dark of future past, the magician longs to see one chance out between two worlds. Fire, walk with me. Ah! So anyway, makes it worse then. You okay there, Laura? Never before have I really, really hated uh, wearing headphones. Ow. Yeah, headphone warning. I'm wearing headphones and I'm just fine. I'm going to put headphone warning on the next to that show. But uh, anyway, makes it worse <laughs> and, and beautiful all at the same time because um, Rory says to her, you know, she says, could you do it to me, to save me, to save you, of course. And so maybe steps on the roof and says to him, prove it. And here we go. And now, Kat, I apologise. And this is really well timed, uh -oh. because it, it literally two hours before we started recording this, a piece of news came out about Doctor Who Series 14. Oh, uh, no. Here he goes. It's yes! Harry Gold. What? He's back! Back. And Rip. I've got. Rip. Yeah, Murray thank you. Fanboy alert. Murray Gold, Fanboy alert. Speaking of King of Fighters, but yeah, thank you for getting that in prematurely. Um, yes. It was an as Murray Gold has returned to the series. And I, I have to say, by the way, shout out to um the, the Series 10 <laughs> South Track account. <laughs> Which says that Murray Gold has returned to Doctor Who before the series 10 soundtrack was released by Murray Gold. At this point, I'm pretty sure they're going to put out series 11 before they put out series 10. Did they? I think they might have already. Series 11 has already got a soundtrack. That's why it's so. <laughs> Every series has a soundtrack except series 10. <laughs> I think even the Flux has one now. So, oh my yeah. fuck. So Amy Pond told me she would die for love. And uh, yeah. So the reason why I'm another, really gold now though is because this is where the two pieces of music which stand out the most in this uh, this story and also perhaps series 7 soundtrack as a whole kick in. We have together or not at all. Which is what plays while Rory's standing on the roof and contemplating, you know, I can't promise if I've room, Amy give me a push. And then Amy says, well, prove it. Run away your mouth is time. And then the doctor, having escaped the angels, just comes onto the roof as they're about to fall. And 
Metsmith breaks everyone's heart by saying, what are you doing, Amy? And Amy just says, changing the future. It's called marriage. And off they go. Um, brilliant. Just just an amazing, amazing set piece, this. And now I'm gonna... It is gorgeous. I, I will say, uh, this is something that Chris pointed out to me because she was watching the episode with me. In fact, she was cleaning her room at the time and she stopped cleaning just to f watch the episode with me. But oh, she was wow. like, man... It's really rude of him. He didn't once call off Rory. No, oh my God. he never did. That's kind of the whole and I, point. I had to, I had to try and explain to her entire season's worth of character building as to why he cares more about Amy. Yes. Oh my God. Very much yep. so. Yes. But uh, the way they fall as, as well, they they just literally just, just go off sideways together, and then they're going they're going down together, and they're embracing and they're hugging, and it's oh, it's beautiful. And now I'm going to ruin it forever because. Because uh -oh. as, as Amy falls off the roof, she whispers in Rory's ear to aim for the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how that's basically how Sherlock survived. Yes. Oh, my God. Isn't the whole point of Sherlock survived that we never actually found out the real way he survived? That's yeah. Not, Amy, yeah. Amy, it was thought to be that... Amy, Amy leans over to Rory and she's like, do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think the point of Sherlock's survival is that even if we were told that how Sherlock survived, we'd poke holes at it. Because we can't help but poke holes at it. That might be the whole point of it. And that was also a Moffat thing. As evidenced by me in this podcast. That was also the a Mark Moffat Gates thing. Thanks, Stephen Moffat, again. Um, well, but yeah, it, it was a Mark Gates episode, so... It, it, it does... It, true, that too. Thank you, Mark Gates, as well. Uh, but um, yeah, they, they 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 go down, and the paradox works. Everything starts to, to fade. They're in. yelling timber. <laughs> we just have to clean this TARDIS up. And uh, wait, what's this gravestone set? They go they're going <laughs> down down an earlier round, and surely they're going down swinging. Uh, they're so, yelling timber. So everything I'm wipes keep out. Keep doing that until you acknowledge it. I, they're yelling timber. timber. I get it. And um, everything wipes out, and. I think I brought this point up when I, I solo reviewed this way back in the day. Yeah. I'm sorry. Everything uh, whites out. A message comes up saying that they they ran their Pokemon straight to the Pokemon Center. <laughs> Amy has run out of usable Making jokes is what's keeping me from crying. Amy has run out of usable life mm. and is blacked out. Well, whited out, but still. Yes. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, the upshot is that they 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 make it. They all wake up in the uh, in the graveyard that the TARDIS was uh, was in before when it bounced We off. did it. We beat predestiny. We changed the now, future. Now here's my, here's my point. Before we get to the three world exists. Before we get to the major the major major scene, um, I I honestly thought that maybe it was going to be that one of them didn't come back. No. That Rory or Amy didn't survive. And that would lead to what happens next. But he didn't go with that. Maybe that would be an alternative uh, plan to uh, end the Pond's time on the show. I mean, it's so much more heartbreaking like this, where on, tr on transmission, as Kat can attest to, because she didn't know, God, that yes. you think, oh, okay, business as usual. We got out of that scrape. That's, whew, that was a close one. Which makes it all the stranger that they announced that the Pond's were leaving. Well, I mean, they do this all Again, time. I did not know that. So if you don't follow Doctor Who news, this was a big kick in the butt. I, mean, I, I knew it. kind that. of knew because they'd split the series in two, and we knew they split the series in two. And this was the I end mean, of the... So this is, is your, is your mid-season cliffhanger. Wait, wait. Kat, I mean, I it... keep saying I did not know. Cat, no, I, 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 ha I have to ask. Does this yeah. also mean that you didn't know the significance of Jenna Coleman being in the Asylum of the Daleks? Oh uh, at first, I did not. No, yeah, because that was the whole. That's the whole thing. Because we know. Because first, you know that the ponds are leaving, and then you know with the if you follow the Doctor Who news, new companion Janet Coleman announced, and then you're watching then, Asylum of the Daleks. Jan Jan Louise Coleman is in Asylum of the Daleks, and she's dead. Yeah, she is dead. which is, is like place. yeah. I, I also did not know that. I'm just going to be right out. I don't follow Doctor Who news. I want to be surprised. And there are so many times that they have spoiled stuff. It's like, uh -huh. quote unquote, they got 
better with Chip Doll because he didn't release fucking anything. I can tell you right now that nobody, like... nobody was spoiled about the Jenna Louise Coleman thing. That was a masterstroke. I, that's what I was about to but say. Yeah, I Kat, had no you idea. Must more be, uh, you must English. have been happy with Chip Doll. For the end, we got spoiled because as American because British Doctor Who couldn't keep their mouths shut. Yeah, sorry about that. But um, oh yeah, as usual. If you want to talk about America being spoiled? You should have heard Cat talk bitch about BBC America. Every it, time. it was announced. Oh, God, fucking BBC think. America. Oh God, yes. Also, I hope to God that the RTD two that the Shin RTD era doesn't and fuck up with that again. You know, the just Shin RTD era. Yeah. <laughs> well, Shin well, RTD. Because- well, it will because it's going to be on Disney Plus instead of BBC America. Oh God! Yeah, they're streaming all. overlords. All the budget. All the budget. Disney is going to oh, buy yeah. Doctor Who. Disney owns oh, yeah. Doctor Who. Which I, means I, Doctor Who, who Star Wars is all but inevitable. No. Yeah, you're right. No, no. Here, here's the here's the good thing about it, because Disney bought Fox. Fox made the Alien series. Fox. Yeah. Fox. On the other hand, Disney bought Fox, and Fox made the TV movie. True. This is true. Also, Disney bought Fox, and Fox despised Tucker Carlson, so it's not all bad. Yeah. Rule of three, bitches. <laughs> the power of three. If, if you will. Oh, oh anyway, you back. But Rory and Amy have, have survived. Yeah. Great. We're going to continue the adventures. Oh my God, Rory, what are you doing? Oh boy! And now it's time for and now it's time for the reason why Cat and Rainiac wanted to kill me when I said that we were doing this show. Don't kill me. Yes, yeah, I can I actually sum up the reason. It. I can actually sum up the reason why Fresno picked this episode. Oh yeah, because he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I mean, that's, that's that's a better way of summing up that he's an asshole. But yes. <laughs> Oh God! So Rory, Rory is about to get in the TARDIS with Amy and 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 River and and the Doctor, and the day is saved, and we're all going to have adventures. Oh, but Amy, there's a gravestone here with my name on it. Vanish. Rory Arthur Williams is dead because it appears on the gravestone, so we can't go back. It's written and in stone. And eighty-two years of age. It's literally mm. written on, in stone. He's right. Yes. He has disappeared like Laura Palmer after him. Jesus oh my Christ. God! Uh, How many Twin Peaks references? He has disappeared like the credibility of many actors. So this, this is the when the time. twilight is gone, <laughs> ah, and those songbirds are singing. Are you sure ah, you're not answering my profession? So, in other words, <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. There is no free will. We are all going to die. I. In short, damn you, Lavos. Uh... <laughs> and so here comes Amy, full of grief. Oh and God! No, and she knows what. And she makes the same choice she just made. This is where together I, I or not at all. It's going to be just absolutely fine outside Doctor Who. By the way, this is where. Yeah, I'm she has a new movie coming out in a few weeks. Yeah. She deserves all the success with in the world Mario. because she is fantastic. But um, yeah, he, featuring uh, Mario, oh, oh, Ahura, uh, the guy from, uh, guy from, uh, what, was, what movie was he in? Uh, not, not the Fast and Furious guy, the other guy. I uh, Bradley, sure? uh what? I, I'm, I'm, I really, I'm pretty sure that Vin Diesel was in Fast and Furious. Yeah, Vin Diesel was, but the other guy, uh, he was in uh, Civil Lions Playbook. Brother Cooper. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. And um, and directed by a guy who may, who didn't figure out how to be a director until he directed John Cena playing the piano. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy sucks. Wow, the hot takes continue. It's a bad movie. The sequel is better. American you know what? I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Is it, is it the same way that the Suicide Squad is a, is a better sequel and film than original Suicide Squad? Yes, in exactly the same way, except it's the same filmmaker making both for Guardians. Yeah. I see. But also, by and the way, surprisingly, John Cena, really, really good in the Suicide Squad, by the way. 
He's Baron Peacemaker. Peacemaker is where See, James now Gunn I, is now I have to him. ask. I have to ask Sean. Do you think that Thor Ragnarok is better than Thor Love and Thunder? And why is that correct? <laughs> yeah, so of course it's better than Thor Love and Thunder. It doesn't have a transphobic gag. <laughs> I wasn't aware that there was a... Yeah, the character... Okay, so in Thor or Love and Thunder, there's this Meyer character called Axel Heimdallson. On which the whole thing is, and Thor is pissed off that Axel changed his name to Axel. Oh, and said something along the lines of, of your father went, what would your father think of that? And it's this bullshit, and it screams transphobic bullshit in, in all but name. Like, the joke is, it's a trans joke, but without a trans person. That sounds absolutely yeah. horrific. Um, and so also, and that's not even the worst part of Love and Thunder. It's just, oh God, is that a terrible movie? It's a shame because it has one, one good gag and they showed then they they revealed it in the trailer. Which one? Which one was that? You flit too hard, damn it. Oh, the Zeus thing? Russell Crowe, but Because yeah. there's nothing problematic about Zeus yeah, being somewhat yeah, naked. Yeah, the movie, that gag doesn't work because they... Cat, they don't post that in. Cat, the post that image from last week in anthology. What was that image you had last Unfortunately, week? Unfortunately, Zeus was horny. Yeah. That's the one. But, but uh, which Greek anyway. god was famous for his world? Zeus is not incorrect. <laughs> but, uh... yeah. And then he becomes a mobster and sends Hercules to fuck things up. Great. Okay. So, so, I mean, that, that's one way to introduce five, Hercules. Us four five. So, so meanwhile, the rock is better than Love and Thunder. Got it. Uh, yep. Meanwhile, back at the Heartbreak Hotel. Um, Together or not at all. Yeah. She makes the same choice, as you pointed out, that she made a few minutes ago. There it is. Um, Thank you, Kelly. I think I had that saved anyway, but um, thank you for uh, for supplying that again. Just in case. Yeah, and the doctor's yeah. attention. Wait, on. Are, are we sure it's at the Heartbreak Hotel and not the Happiness Hotel? Damn it. Uh, damn it, went to the... Damn it, went to the ad. I wanted to play the song. I heard you trying to play the song. It didn't quite play. Well, I mean... If we get lucky, maybe it'll be the has been hotel. <laughs> but, but yeah. When are we gonna get more episodes? Damn it! With tears, the doctor pretends. Max's Daisy is better. With tears in Amy's eyes, she asks, "Not the doctor, but her own daughter. Is this my best shot of being back with Rory? Will it send me to the same time?" And the doctor, of course, is saying, "We don't know that. No, come back in the TARDIS pond. You know, come along. We'll figure this out." And River tells him to shut up again. And she encourages her mother. Ah, yeah, she it should. Is. It is. And Amy makes her choice. Raggedy man. Goodbye. Goodbye. Everybody dies. And Some so, time. written in immutable stone, in loving memory of Rory Arthur Williams, died age 82. And his wife, Amelia Williams, died age 87. Which is even sadder Which... now because she lived five years without him. Or did she lied about, or she said that she was older. That's a call back to Blink. I'm impressed. And so, um... Which, actually, kind of the inverse of what happened in Blink. And so the angels have come full circle. And so, yeah, this this is a much better, uh, yeah, it's the end of Neverland, time to grow up bullshit than God Complex did. This is way more heartbreaking than this. It's, it's so much more heartbreaking. Know. It's definitive. It's final. It's written okay. in stone. Yeah. The uh, angels... it's also, but it's also, you know, uh, the Moffat thing of they died, but... They lived. But, but the Of course, the now that we have talked about angels so much, we have to talk about best angel. They're, they're dead to the doctor. Yes! Oh, my God. I'll be honest. Look at her dance. I was expecting that about an hour sooner than it showed up. There you go. In Even better, better quality. In better quality. You okay, know I'll just it. use that, that version instead. It's the one good part of that movie. That movie fucking sucks. But, the dance but that is part good. is lit. <laughs> I'm going to watch that now just to see what she's dancing to. But, uh, oh, I can get you the clip after. Same. Don't worry about it. After, well, after. We still have a podcast to finish up here. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about Matt Smith crying his eyes out. So And everyone else crying his eyes out with him. Yeah, I mean, the grief he goes through is just... 
John, I heard you load it up. <laughs> I heard the first note, and I was like, I knew it. It's a good song. <laughs> Kat, I would like to apologize because I was about to blame you for that. It is, <laughs> it is a good song. That movie has a great soundtrack. I was about to say the soundtrack. Yeah, right. I, I, I'll be sure to watch that, listen to that. Excellent actually, you know what? I think I actually have that song on my soundboard. Hang on, let me see. Uh, oh no, 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 not again. Really? I'm not here comes. again. I'm waiting for the Mariah. It's not Mariah. Here it comes. It's not Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, I knew it's not Mariah. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Beautiful. Christmas. Everything. There it is. And, uh... Personally, I prefer the My Chemical Romance version. I have to find that what? now. What? I have to find that There's now. There's a My Chemical Romance version? I have to find that now. Oh. Yes. Oh, you, oh we, we have just evolved the bit on the podcast, I think. It being the end of it, well, no, because that, that will definitely get I've been logging right. for the last two yep. years. I, if you watch my videos, you yeah, know so, Sorry, I sorry about the ads. You got to edit this out. I don't want to the oh, no, fuck. Wrong version. There that's not My Chemical Romance. Yeah, I know. That's not what it is. Anyway, um, Matt Smith bawling oh, in, God, in yeah. tears because his, his best friend, because um, his bestie's gone. And of course, it doesn't that one. Yeah, I'll I'll listen to that later. That's the one that I guys. thought was, but this is the actual one. If this is the Mariah version as well, I will wipe my head off. I don't know how many, how much that can actually broadcast, go, but um, go fuck yourself. That was brilliant. Love you too. Enjoy the end, motherfuckers. Uh, uh, I may have to beat the audio for all but the last five seconds of that, but that was masterful again. Um, like I said, like the channel says, Cat I'm a breathe. mad man you should never have trusted. Breathing is good. Yes. Remember, Cat, remember the oh breathe. no, I trust you enough. So Matt Smith is heartbroken and Cat is just broken. And um, he gets oh no, a, I'm fine. He gets a final exchange with River, and River's trying to come for him and say, you know, she made the right choice. It was her choice to make, and uh, it's all right for you, River. You'll get to see them again. I can't go back because convenience. Um, it's the ending. He, he doesn't like endings. Yeah. And this is his ending. Mm -hmm. He could pick up Sarah Jane. He could pick up up Adric. He could pick up any of them, but he never does yeah. because. Yeah, Ad um, I mean, Adric's kind of fucking dead. Yeah, Adric died in a specific way that uh, apparently people are pissed off about that he decided to save Clara and not Adric. <laughs> I mean, he survived. I'm not he survived the explosion. I mean, <laughs> on the one hand, I absolutely love Clara. She is golden. She's beautiful. Love her. He he definitely could have saved Adric. I mean, if you've seen the DVD, could we we all know the secret I mean, ending where he survives the explosion in, in Earthshock. But they get stepped on by a dinosaur. Yeah, that's kind of what he deserves, all things considered. That's canon. Excuse yeah. you, Adric did not deserve any of that. And actually, that's not strictly canon, because he actually survives a shock as well. Because of course he uh, does. Fucking big fish, everyone. Thanks, big finish. You made it worse somehow. They always do. Yeah, excuse you, they made it better. No, they, they, did. they actually did. That did not... You told Don't me the be summary. Don't be me, Adric. 
Cat, he's just a boy. Cat, he, it would have no, been no, 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 He's just, just a boy. I'm not saying this to be to be cruel, but the dinosaur stepping on him is a better ending than Big Finish gives him. Boy, no, it isn't. God. no, it really is. Mm. You, you told me the summary of that, and I was like, oh my god, that sounds like shit. Why the fuck would they do you that? You either die a hero or they're going to become the villain. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. This Why am I the only one who's likes, who likes Adric? I didn't say I didn't like I Adric. Just like I just him, said the boy but... who kind of forgot sucks. Right, crap, I'm trying to find the freaking link for it. Uh, well, for the, the boy who forgot, I got that covered. So, uh, yeah, anyway, River won't come <laughs> to the doctor, is he? As a full this time. This is actually getting that Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm just going to put Hello. that, just, just a still image, and people know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. I don't yes. know what he's talking about. I'll have to watch that after. Yes, it's You've an amazing. Seen this, clip. this is an amazing moment in TV history. You've seen this. What does that even mean? And both the puppeteer and the no, presenter I have this dined is... out. Both... You really, Kat, is, is this a bit that you really haven't seen this clip? I, I have no idea what this is. I think I've leaned this oh my God. Here, but we'll play it after we're finished. But, um, anyway, we'll wrap up. Is, uh, are, is, is that little puppet going to start singing about not putting certain things in your mouth? No. No. Is no, that's that? Canada. Okay. R River, River. I'm just making sure. River will get to see her parents again. Because she can just, you know, travel, not through time, but come and see them. Um, the doctor doesn't have that luxury, but. River says, I'll get Amy to write you an afterword. And then the doctor realizes, the last page. So he sprints back to the bin where he screwed it up, and it's still there. And um, then we all start crying. Again, yes. Fucking start. Crying. Why'd you pick this episode? Afterword by Amelia William. Start. And I, I, I do mean Amelia William, because they misspelled her surname on the page. You guys were crying? They they get it right they get it right with the narration but they on the actual written page they they misspell it as M Amelia William so that's funny but um, uh, this is not funny this is taking my heart and putting it into a blender and hitting the puree button it's the final farewell to Doctor Who and get this the final cruel irony it's the final breakdown the final cruel, <laughs> the final cruel, <laughs> the final cruel punchline Stephen Moffat Steve no. had been planning this for two and a half years. Oh my but god. When, when he wrote the opening scene of the 11th hour, he had this scene in mind as well. <laughs> oh probably, not the, probably not the, the exact circumstances of it, like the angels being the ones to get Amy and Rory off the show in the end. But the punchline to this little scene where Amy says, you know, hello, old friend. Uh, by the time you read this, we'll be long gone. So know that we live well. We never stop loving you. And, and then, of course, <laughs> Amy makes one last request. Go to the yeah. girl who waited. Yeah. So we start with me. Amy making a request to an imaginary friend and then with Amy making a request to an imaginary friend. Aww. Yeah. Oh, who am I kidding? Santa's totally real. And I believe Kashiri told me the story that when they were filming this, Matt Smith legitimately broke down. Oh. I'm sorry, did somebody say motherfucking Santa? Motherfucking Santa! Motherfucking Santa! No, you gotta say it more, Matt Bar Barry. Motherfucking Santa! Honey, I invented the motherfucking Santa on this podcast. I, I, my, my voice is not going to thank me for this, but what the hell? Motherfucking Santa. Wait, what, 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 what was it she said? What was it she said? I think it was went something like, uh, help me out here. Motherfucking Santa? <laughs> yes, like that. And it's ruined. It's dead. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> When they filmed, when I'm, they, I'm trying really, really hard not to laugh. When they filmed this final scene, and you can hear I'm Amy's trying. words, um, you know, being narrated as the doctor reads them. Uh, Amy was reading them behind Matt Smith. Uh, sorry, Karen Gillan was reading them behind Matt Smith, and Matt Smith broke down in tears. 
<laughs> they had to stop, as Kachiri tells they had to stop filming, comfort him, and go back to it. Mm. And I'm going to read the afterword. Um, because after they say, you know, we, we will love you always, but sometimes I do worry about you. I think once we're gone, you won't be coming back here for a while. You might be alone, which you should never be. Again, that's a that's a common thread with other companions. You know, you need someone to stop you sometimes. Thanks, Donna. Um, don't be alone, Doctor. And do one more thing for me. There's a little girl waiting in a garden. She's going to wait a long while, so she's going to need a lot of hope. Go to her. Tell her a story. Tell her if she's patient. The days are coming she'll never forget. Tell her she'll go to sea and fight pirates. She'll fall in love with a man who went 2,000 years to keep her safe. Tell her she'll give hope to the greatest painter who ever lived and save a whale in outer space. Tell her this is the story of Amelia Pond and this is how it ends and I have to stop because I have a lump in my throat. P.S. Run. <laughs> Run, you clever boy, and remember me. Oh, God. P.S. You had to mention P.S.? I no, that's cool. uh, P.S. The last thing Chris Chibnall ever wrote for Doctor Who. <laughs> if only. Yeah, mm. if only that was. But um, yeah, Chris Chibnall wrote a, a postscript to this uh, this episode, and it was intended to be filmed. It was intended to be a DVD extra. But well, they decided to wasn't it, the uh, Wasn't it they couldn't get somebody? Yeah, he was unavailable. Brian was unavailable. Amy, Amy and Rory's adopted son. Mark, goes to see uh, Rory's Mark father. Mark Williams was too busy being Father Brown at this point. Yeah, it, yeah. Mark Williams was too busy to play Graham 1.0. Oh my god. Yeah, the yeah, he's too busy to be the prototype for Graham. Look, Brian's all you, right. You're right, and I hate it. Brian's all right. He's only in two episodes. <laughs> Graham, meanwhile, is in two series and the special. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. Meanwhile, poor old. <laughs> Poor old and yet, about here being mistaken for Brandon Walsh at every turn there. by the cast. One could argue that Graham is the main character of the era. He's the only one who has an arc. He definitely and is. And I hate it. You're right, and I hate that you're right. But yeah, basically, hmm. in, in PS, which obviously stands for postscript, it's Rory writes his dad a letter with a, a an elderly gentleman comes to the house, uh, and we find out that this is their adopted son, and he's older than Brian. Gosh. Because that's how time works. Yep. Um, if you want to, if you want to uh, find Postscript or PS, you can. Find it's on it. YouTube. It's out there. It's out there sure on YouTube. Not. And so, with hearing, with a uh, little Amelia Pond hearing the TARDIS come back and fading to uh, sepia tones, that's the Angels Take Manhattan. This is how it ends. My favorite Matt Smith story. Your favorite Matt Smith story. Why don't you tell Matt us what you thought of it? I love it. It's heartbreaking. It's a delightful story, delightful math fiction. And I hate you for making me having to rewatch it because I am sad again. Love you too. You're um, never knowing how the straight story relates to Star Trek. <laughs> one day. One day. That's the price you pay for pulling this stunt. I hope you know that. I am. That's the price I was always paying. Uh, you, you, you will never reach the original star. Um, wait the a minute. That's original star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you just quote my... Did you just quote our April Fool's quiet. back at me? No. Oh, boy. No, not intentionally, no. I just love that song. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, did somebody say quoting some april fools i was born in the united states of america i denied these anyway. allegations but yeah. anyway uh angels you take manhattan said it. I, I i love it as heartbreaking as it is it's got interesting things to it the whole i really love sean's take about it being metafiction and amy and rory being trapped in a story and desperately trying to change the ending for the better which in a way they do so you can change the future. You can't, you can't change the whole, what's going to happen, but you can change the uh, details, I suppose you'd say. Mm. And the angels are threatening and spooky as always. And god damn, is it a sad but satisfying companion departure. I love it. One of you two? Okay, you can go, Ness.
Maybe I don't want to go next. Do you want me to go third? All right, I'll go third. All right, so... Is, well... Is, is it me? All right, okay. Uh, it made me cry, zero out of ten. No, <laughs> seriously. Um, it's, it's really difficult to rate this one because mechanically, parts of it just do not work, like the Statue of Liberty being an angel. But it's got some great set pieces, like the cherubs, the chase through the hotel, the beautiful, beautiful jump off the roof, which I've now ruined forever with, with my uh, Aim for the Bushes comment. But <laughs> and now I've done it a second time. But it's the it's the it's the farewell. It's the music. It's the emotional farewell. It's the fact that this is the end of the Pond story, and they're never coming back. We know that comment where they were brought back by Bruno Langley, but they're never coming back. They they do meet Clara in that comic. Oh my! But uh, it kind of walks over the whole. They're never able to come back to the TARDIS. But here they are now. But they're never able to come back. Don't know what you're talking mm. about, Chief. No, it's I loved it. it. It's not my favorite Matt Smith story, but I appreciate the fact that it's Sean's. It's a perfectly valid take. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you picked it so we can talk about it, friends. But also, I hate you. Love you too, Cat. Go ahead. I mean, it's it's hard to say anything that's different than what you guys have said. It is a beautiful send off. Uh, I mean, the most I could say it was that at the time it was a little weird that it happened in the middle of everything. But again, that was me not actually paying attention to Doctor Who news, so maybe I just missed that part. But um, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> Again, it's 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 a struggle to figure out something that you guys haven't already said. It's a beautiful episode. It's got beautiful moments. I still absolutely despise the Statue of Liberty. That's a stupid part to me. But I can see why other people find it compelling and, you know, like it. it, it it's hard to really... Like, I, I nitpick mostly for fun. Just to be like, ooh, but what about this? You know, to be that part of the Doctor Who fandom that are all like, but what about my continuity? And all that bullshit. And it, it's hard to nitpick this one. It really is. Like, the most nitpicky thing I have is 100% just the Statue of Liberty. So, like, it, it's just a fantastic episode. It's got fantastic acting. It's got fantastic story. And I love it. Cat, cat. Stop fucking around with the angels. Cat, you're, you're sleeping on your nitpicks. You missed the big one uh, that most people have pointed out. And then the, I think I jokingly reference this one in the angel retrospective what if why doesn't doctor who just park the tardis in new jersey in 1938 and go across the bridge to see amy and rory because there's no such thing as parking in new jersey for that matter there's no such thing as parking in new york there you go see that's this perfect plot hole filler excellent well done 10 out of 10 uh so who who's picking next uh Okay, I have. It's like this is like Good Man Goes to War. I've risen as far as I possibly can, and now comes the fucking fall of hubris as I get paid back. Uh, yeah, for now, making now comes the, uh, Angels. the decline because uh, normally it would be Cat's pick now, but Cat has agreed. But I had passed on the torch. Yeah, Cat has agreed to pass her pick to Sean for a week. <laughs> well, now I'm worried because so Sean, on a scale of one to eleven, how screwed are we? <laughs> yes. Well, that depends, dear Rainiac. <laughs> you see, you gave me a list of episodes that you haven't covered yet. So I decided to check the website to see if you covered a particular episode that wasn't on that list. Oh, no. <laughs> the one I left up to live Oh, God. You left one <laughs> off, which means I can pick it. And so, your next episode is... <laughs> I'm down for it. I'm down for it. Sure, April Fool's was last month. <laughs> I was so sure that this was going to be something worse. I'm absolutely fine with that. That's a brilliant out-of-the-box pick. Did I actually like James Corbin? My favorite... This is technically my favorite... This was for a long time my favorite Doctor Who story. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ending with a hot text as well, Baka. 
Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, we will do the uh, curse of fatal death. I'm fine with that. Oh boy. <laughs> Unless this is a bit, you're actually gonna pick another story, but if it's not a bit, we'll No, this is what it. I'm doing. You're watching Curse of Fatal Death. All right. I mean it's not you you said it like it's some sort of terrible ordeal, but it's actually fun. Yeah, that's, that that was the bit. That was the bit. It's a, oh, that's a good that's a good bit. <laughs> I mean I had backup in case you said no. I wasn't gonna no, say no. no but We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. I'll. I'll find that I gotta know what was the time. backup. No, no. Tell us uh, another time. Mary White House. <laughs> I take it back. back. Uh, Doctor Who drowning. Oh. God. Oh. I don't know I, what I, this is. I thought you said Toby Whithouse, and I was like, oh god. And I love. Said, I love how you. I sent you a list, and you deliberately picked one that wasn't on it. That's just brilliant. Uh, <laughs> you told me a troll. I didn't. Yeah. Cat did. You. You, you succeeded. Yes. It was, yes. A, it was, a, it was, a, it was a good spirit I am so troll. proud of you. Yeah, it was a good spirit to troll. But um, since right. Fresno has, has forgotten to, to do this, I will tell the people where they can find us. So I was about to get to that. We were maybe. Right here, I'll do it. Rainy, where can you find us, lovely people? You took too long. But you can find us, lovely people, on Twitter at Reviews Doctor. You can also find us individually at Rainy Domania, at Freezing Inferno, and at Concave Usurper. Twitch.tv forward slash Freezing Inferno forward slash Concave Usurper forward slash Freezing Inferno forward slash The Kachiri. And normally I would plug, you know, certain works by certain authors, but since we have the, one of the authors here, we're not going to get this chance again. So, Sean, you get to plug your own book. Okay, well, for stars, you can read Krista McTire's Back to the 11th Hour over at Arcbeal Press, as well as Through the Tower Through the Trees by Sean Dillon. Me. Yay! You can also find Yay. One Must Imagine Scott Free Happy over on Amazon, which I self-published. And you could probably find some other collections, like, I believe, uh, what was that name of the collection, Fresno? Heather of the Gallifreyan, book one. Thank you very much. Uh, there's also a new collection coming out about Sherlock Holmes from Arcbeal Press that I have a short story in that I'm going to start working on this, get a fish working on this week. Wait, wait, I, I just, I just have one thing that, wait. Has it been Krista McTire the entire time? I think so. There's... I've been calling them McTeer! Kristen and I have never actually heard her voice. Heard she never corrected now. us. We should probably ask her. Oh, no. Have I been fucking it up the entire time? I'm so sorry. Well, we all have them because... Yeah, I... I was going to say, I'm pretty sure she would have corrected us. Yeah, we've been doing this show for... I assume that especially that considering correct. we called her that during the entire show that she was on. Okay, well, I guess... Yeah. And she never wants to but maybe, polite. maybe she was too polite. We'll, we'll have to ask her if we've, if we've got it wrong all this time, in which case, whoops. Sorry, Krista. But um, I do want to I thank... I got it wrong. I'm an even more hot wire. I'm her editor. I should know this. That's true. <laughs> you're, you're in the same... You're in even more of a, of a, of a sticky uh, situation than we are. But, okay, uh, either Sean has it wrong, and Krista's very polite, or all three of us have it wrong, and Krista is the most polite person in the entire fucking world. She's polite Either way, Krista comes out on top. She's more polite than the comedian sure. in, the, in the podcast. Just let that sink in. <laughs> Do so I have to? It keeps flooding my room. <laughs> On yeah. that note, uh, I want to thank um, Sean for agreeing to do this and just being a great sport about it. Not a problem, and I thank you for like, giving me the opportunity to make you all miserable. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to explain how the straight story is like Star Trek. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Fred, what did you do to him? Why would I do have done something to him? I want him to go on. <laughs> Oh God! So, so anyway, yeah, yeah we, we thank um, Sean Dillon for uh, for agreeing to be the special guest for this uh, podcast. We hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time for the Curse of Fatal Death. Rowan Atkinson stars in the C Curse of Fatal Death. Yeah, and look forward whenever I have money for all those fucking books that he mentioned editing for me for, in exchange for goods and services. You're a published author now, bitch. Welcome to hell. And, and also, just want to just want to promote. If you want to contribute money to the fund to get Colin Baker on this show, we have a grand total of five thousand dollars. We got, or not five thousand, five hundred dollars that we need to get to. Please donate to. Man, I can't believe Sean got got by Kendall Jack. So anyway.
the next time we see River, the hell is that? I have no idea. Sure, okay. Okay. All right. So, so, so something fell over there, but if you're ready to continue, we can resume. No, I was just hoping a uh, thing of Tic Tacs. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Did you bring enough for the rest of the class? Yes, I do have enough. Uh, Let him just try would you like me to through the, the, the reality of the camera? Yes. yes. Just, just throw the mush it in. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Come on, let me give it to Fresno first. Come on, get through the VR, v, you, VTuber image, and... Uh, my hand appears to be stuck. <laughs> yeah, so I see. Uh, here, two, oh, let, let me... Okay, uh, on three. No. <laughs> Not good. Not good. Not okay, good. good, 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 good. Oh, God, that hurts. He's even, he's even doing uh, skits now. Uh, yeah. I'm having such a good time. I'm not. <laughs> I am. Do you ever, what do you mean you're not? We hired you again, right? Do you ever have a day where you no, just no, realize see, that you're completely and utterly useless? No, no, see, see, Frez, it's because he has to edit it later. <laughs> Arsenal. Uh, so. No, 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 see, Rain, that means you're not useless. You're the editor. Mm -hmm. True. And, and I guess that's an important are... job. Also, did you just go with Steve? It's not like you go with Steve. No, no. Oh, great. It's going to turn out that you're actually Stephen Moffat this whole time. No, no. Oh, my God. No, no. We all know his name is actually Brad. Oh, okay. mm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's, it's David. It's either David or Steve. By telling the, by telling the story, of course, I'm making this real, but. Um... Yeah, we had several Unreal. healthcare professionals come to the house as of late, and people were talking on the phone. And for some reason, every one of them mistakenly thought my name was Brad. Despite being told my name actually was, it is. <laughs> being told it was not Brad. Your no. your name is your name is Brad, and you're from Tejas. Uh, okay, Bragan. <laughs> okay, I, I should change my my Twitter name to Brad from Tejas. That's that's perfect. <laughs> I, I just want right again. I want. I want. I want you all to know that uh, one of our chats is now called the Strictly Rated Brad Channel. Yes. 